and some homebrew story time. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Toast Hammer. Now, if you saw last week's video, you might have noticed that I was a little bit in a hobby funk. Didn't have a lot of exciting projects to really grab my interest. So I thought, I just need a win right now. And to do that, I decided to paint up uh, my uh, kitbash inquisitor model of Gina Arichiel, which you may have seen me kitbash previously in the video entitled Kitbashing, <laughs> the uh, world's most underrated inquisitor. Well, we're going to paint her up this week. Most of the paint job is not technically that novel, so I thought I would take a page out of Bill Makestuff's book and do a little bit of story time while I paint. But before I do that, I do want to cover one important aspect of this paint job that I see uh, people online struggling with all of the time, and that's painting eyes. So let's get right into it. Now, eyes are the bane of many painting enthusiasts all over the world, and that's just because they're really small on <laughs> miniatures. But I have a pretty good technique that avoids the weird kind of uh, fish eye look that you can often get by painting eyes. Uh, and it also allows you to cover a lot of your mistakes. Now, people make an assumption that the white of the eye is white and that the pupil is black. And that is fundamentally an incorrect assumption. And that assumption is only blown out even more when we're approaching a small size, such as a 28 millimeter scale that Warhammer uses. Look real closely at my eyes here. Look, look at the, the white. This is a well-lit room as well. But you'll notice that it's not pure white. In fact, it's a lot closer to a gray. You can go ahead and even pause the video there and color sample it, or wait, I'll do that for you. Now we can take this technique over to the sphere of miniature painting as well by uh, using a non-white paint. At this scale, a lot of the shadow of the brow is going to be covering eyes. So I like to choose more of a medium gray for the white of the eyes to represent how you would actually see someone's eyes at the distance represented by miniature scale. And then another darker gray, but also not pure black for the pupil because we actually don't want a high amount of contrast here. This will break the illusion that you're looking at someone's actual eyes because at these distances represented, you will not be able to resolve that much detail unless you have literally like superhuman vision, which as you can tell by these bad boys, I don't. And I'm guessing you don't either. But last time while we were kitbashing, I regaled you with a couple of stories about Gina Retchiel and who she is as an Inquisitor. And I thought that I would take the time to extend the lore a little bit further. See, she hasn't been in the public facing uh, aspects of Warhammer 40,000 for quite some time. Uh, I don't even know if she's ever been in anything post Cadia, for example. So I thought I would fold her into the homebrew lore that I have for my Forge world. Now my Forge, if you have uh, learned a little bit about it, is embroiled in an inquisitorial conspiracy in the Calixus sector, which is also where the Dark Heresy role-playing game takes place. My Forge specifically uh, has allied itself with what is known as the Xenos Hybris faction of Inquisitors, who are more akin to uh, seeking to understand the alien, both their strengths and their weaknesses, to better combat them and potentially learn from them, which is seen as heretical by pretty much everybody else. <laughs> but because of this alliance, 
the Inquisition plays a very strong role in the operations of my Forge World, and I wanted to represent that by having a cadre of Inquisitors who are known members of the conspiracy and who are allied with the Forge themselves. I think Gina Aridchiel would be a great pick for someone to join up with this conspiracy. She is a quite radical Xeno Inquisitor herself. She uses an Eldar pistol straight up. Uh, and in my homebrew, she's actually captured a, a shard of the Satan and uses that against her foes. Now, in old editions of the game, I used this uh, to represent Eisenhorn and Cherubale on the tabletop. Those rules don't really exist anymore, but it's still like a nice, fun little bit of flavor, and I got a cool mini out of it, too. So at this point, she is a pretty well embroiled member of this inquisitorial conspiracy and has been calling the shots and supporting Forge My Death for quite some time now, along with a cadre of several other inquisitors in this sort of inner cabal within the Ordo Xenos. Her ultimate fate is somewhat of an unknown still, but we do know that she has been operating recently, as recently as a well, hundred or so years after uh, the forming of the Great Rift across the galaxy. Uh, if you eagle-eyed viewers have seen my Mydath Army Showcase. But... We do come to the end of our painting here. All that's left to do is base her up and get ready for that reveal. So let's take a look at the newly finished Gina Ariccia. I hope you enjoyed that video very much. I really enjoyed painting this miniature. It was really nice to just kind of finish up a project after moving my entire location. Some stuff is still kind of, uh, you know, work in progress. You might see the layout of this whole setup change a couple of times as I'm figuring out the best way to uh, record videos going forward. But, you know, hopefully it'll just get better. If you enjoyed the video, which I very much hope you did, be sure to throw a like at it. It really helps the videos out. And if you want to see more of this inquisitorial conspiracy, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. And hey, come check out the Toast Hammer Discord and share your hobby wins. What have you painted, finished up, or even started working on recently? Come let us know, either there or in the comments below. And until next time, Peace.